pueblo que camina por el mundo gritando ven Señor un pueblo que busca en él esta vida la gran liberación the people walk throughout the world together and cry out, come, O oh Lord. The people who long to claim the promise of God's liberating word. The poor ones of the world await the dawn of hope when all the justice shines and makes oppression flee. The empty hands of all are raised to you, O oh Lord. Oh, set us free. The people walk throughout the world together, gritando, ven, Señor. Un pueblo que busca en esta vida la gran liberación. You broke the bonds of sin, untied the captive's hands, when all the fear and slavery to the law. They lift our hands and hope we put our trust in you, O oh God of love. The people walk throughout the world together and cry out. shed in mindless war and families desire a home where conflicts cease with all the world we lift our hands and hope to you oh god of peace un pueblo que camina por el mundo gritando Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning, uh, Sunday, October 10th. Those of you who are joining us online, welcome to do worship today as well. Um, you'll see uh, kind of the order of worship on the slides today and a few opening announcements. Uh, we will be observing communion today, uh, so you can prepare those elements at home if you're joining us from home and we are streaming this on YouTube so if you have prayer requests uh, you can drop those in the chat uh, today um, or at prayer time as well. Uh, just a few announcements before we get started uh, that aren't uh, up on the screen here. Um, this past week a uh, longtime member Elotis Laban uh, passed away so some of you uh, remember her um, and we don't have flowers on the altar this morning. We kind of wanted to offer that in memory or in honor of, of people, um, anniversaries, remembrances, and so forth. Um, and if we were having altars uh, this morning and we're worshiping in person here, uh, we'd have uh, flowers in memory of Corinne Gilbertson's son, Kevin. I noticed that she'd signed up. So uh, even though we don't have those flowers and we aren't worshiping in person, that is definitely a... Uh, um, and memory worth honoring. So just wanted to point that out today. Otherwise, we will begin worshiping uh, today with the greeting. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. In the readings later today, we will hear about uh, our God who understands our weakness, who knows our weakness. And in that reading from Hebrews that Sandra will read later um, is the line, let us approach that throne with boldness, the throne of grace with boldness. And I love that 
line that God doesn't want us to come uh, cowering or, or in fear of this punishment that God will someday uh, give to us. But no, we can approach that throne of grace with boldness. And so when we do confession and hear the words of forgiveness, that is the relationship that we are putting ourselves in. So let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like lost sheep, we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. Friends, remember that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But by the gift of grace in Christ Jesus, God has made you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness that you have in Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, increase in us the gifts of faith, that forsaking what lies behind and reaching out to what lies ahead, we may follow the way of your commandments and receive the crown of everlasting joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our opening song today is Lord, whose love and humble service. Lord. 
Sandra will now have uh, the readings of the day. Our first reading is found in Amos chapter 5, verses 6 through 7, and verses 10 through 15. Seek the Lord and live, or he will break out against the house of Joseph like fire, and it will devour Bethel with no one to quench it. Ah, you that turn justice to wormwood and bring righteousness to the ground. They hate the one who reproves in the gate, and they abhor the one who speaks the truth. Therefore, because you trample on the poor and take from them levels, levies of grain, you have built houses of hewn stone, but you shall not live in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink their wine. For I know how many are your transgressions and how great are your sins. You who afflict the righteous, who take a bribe and push aside the needy in the gate. Therefore, the prudent will keep silent in such a time, for it is an evil time. Seek good and not evil, that you may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you. Just as you have said, hate evil and love good, and establish justice in the gate. It may be that the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. Word of God, word of life. Our second reading is from Hebrews chapter 4, verses 12 through 16. Indeed, the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit, joints from marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart, and before him no creature is hidden, but all are naked and laid bare to the eyes of the one to whom we must render an account. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Word of God, word of life. Our gospel today is in Mark chapter 10, verses 17 to 31. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran, ran up and knelt before him and asked him, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not defraud, honor your father and mother. He said to him, teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, you lack one thing. Go and sell what you own and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, then who can be saved? 
Jesus looked at them and said, for mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God, all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, truly I tell you, there is no one who left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age, houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children and fields with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last will be first. The Gospel of our Lord. All right, now is the time where we have our children's message, and I will do that at the chair where I usually do the children's message from, so I'll meet you over there. Hey, kids. I um, hope you're having a good week uh, this week. You can see that our tent isn't here anymore. For the past month, we had season of creation, so we had a, a big tent here, and we we talked about that, but that's gone. We've moved on uh, to other things. So a uh, different setup today. And I wanted to tell you, I have something under my chair. I'll pull that out later. Um, but I wanted to tell you that I used to love like my birthday and Christmas, times when I would get gifts. And, and maybe you enjoy that time too, like your birthday or Christmas because you get gifts. And the thing I love about gifts is that my friends were there, and they all brought these things for me, and they were wrapped up, and I didn't know what they were, but I knew they were for me, and I could unwrap them, and it would be something that I didn't have that I would enjoy and, and would probably like, um, and I could keep it. Uh, but the thing is, um, you see, here we go. Here's a, here's a gift I have here. The thing is, gifts, you know, we, we kind of play with them for a while, and then we might forget about them and stop, stop playing with them. And in the gospel today, there was a man who came to Jesus, and he was kind of asking for a gift. He heard that Jesus had something that he did not have. Now, this person had a lot of money already, and he wanted this other gift. And so he was expecting something kind of like, kind of like this, maybe. Something that he didn't have, but he really wanted. Uh, but Jesus said, and, and that was called eternal life. He, he said, Jesus, tell me how to have eternal life. I want to have this gift that I don't have. And Jesus said, oh, you're thinking it's something like this. You're thinking it's a present that you get and that you get to keep and is yours. And, and maybe not a lot of other people have it, but it's, it's yours. Just you have it. Jesus said, oh, no, it's not that kind of present. It's a kind of present that you give away. So think about it. It's like going to a backwards birthday party. Imagine if there was a birthday party and there were a bunch of gifts there, but you had to give all those gifts away to everyone who came. That's what Jesus is telling us that the kingdom of God is like. That's what following Jesus is like. It's not just us getting all these these great things and becoming rich or becoming, um, you know, having all these toys that we get to play with. It's about giving a life away. And that's kind of difficult to, to follow. That's kind of difficult sometimes to accept. But Jesus says that, that for God, it's not impossible. God helps us with that. God helps us be the people who God wants us to be in the world. And so we always hope that you are becoming that kind of person, that you talk to your parents and, and people at church about uh, becoming that kind of person who, who can give away the love of God in the world. Because that's what we need right now. We need that really, really badly, actually. So I hope you have a good week. I hope you learn uh, some really cool things this week, okay? And I'm going to say a prayer, even though... Uh, uh, you're through the computer screen. I'm still going to say a prayer with you, okay? Let's pray. God, thank you for loving us, for giving us a gift of life that 
sometimes doesn't look like a present, but is still pretty great nevertheless. And help us to give your love to everyone we meet. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, kids, you have a great week. We'll see you next time. For the message today, I'm going to be looking at uh, Mark's gospel, um, the exchange between Jesus and the rich man who comes to him. Um, we'll be getting into, into that a little bit. Uh, before I begin, let's uh, start with prayer. Let's pray. God, we hear your words sometimes with uh, disappointment and also hope. Sometimes disappointment because we don't exactly know what they mean for us or what to do with them. But we trust that you guide and that you lead if we turn to you. And God, we ask that you light that candle of hope in our lives, in our path, that we may follow you and learn from you and trust in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, at the edge of the campus of, of Northern Arizona University in Flagstaff is a little blue building that I know I've talked with you a little bit about before because that little blue building houses Lutheran Campus Ministry, uh, the group that I was very involved in in my university days. And uh, that's really where I found my place. You know, I found my people. I grew in faith. If I were to point to like the most uh, vibrant time of my faith, of my faith growth and development, I would say is that time. It was that community uh, in, in college. It was significant uh, for how I think of, of worship, for what I think a community of faith looks like. Uh, for what I think belonging, um, when I think of what it means to belong to something, I think of that community and that place. Um, and when I, I know I've shared with a uh, little bit about this uh, community with you before, but when I graduated, after I left, I really felt that hole uh, where it used to be. You know, I was so involved, planning trips, planning uh, studies and uh, camping, hiking, all sorts of things both for my, my you know, um, faith development, but also my, my social community. That community was so important. And when I moved away and had that hole, you know, realized that, oh, I'm missing something. I wanted it back. I wanted it back. And, wa and the hard thing was I knew I couldn't get it because I couldn't, I was done with university. That was it. You know, that, I wasn't going to live those four years again. And years later, I reflected on how that community brought a lot of good. It was so good for me to grow in faith the way that I did. Uh, but like with many things, you know, those things that are strengths are also weaknesses. I realized how uh, insular that community was at times, how that circle was just so, um, so tight, you know. Um, and my expectations since then have changed for what it means to belong to congregations and uh, a people of faith. And I made a connection recently when I was reading a book by Barbara Brown Taylor. Um, she's reflecting on the, the church communities that she belonged to and, you know, thinking about how important those physical places were, those physical houses of, of worship. Those were sacred places, right? It's where, it's where people celebrated babies. It's where they buried their dead. It's where they praised God in such beautiful uh, ways and, and very meaningful, powerful experiences. And she shares about how that community, those communities for her, were like people adding wood to a fire, right? It's like building a fire together, each person contributing something that adds light and adds warmth. And it's a really really beautiful thing. And she shares about how, you know, being involved in those, there are people who, who aren't just satisfied with that. They want more. 
They want more than just worship service. They want more than just serving on, on uh, committees. They want more than just being in the choir. They want the stronger sense of God's presence. They want to stay in that presence. They want to be filled by it. It is so meaningful for them. And she makes the observation, the confession, that the only way most of us knew how to get that, how to get that more, was to spend more time in church. And so as a result, they volunteered more. They thought of more programs. They read more books. Uh, but in the end, that still didn't fulfill them. They still felt that gnawing desire for more, for something else. Whatever intimacy they realized in a worship service or in that community was lost by the time they got out to the parking lot. And they found that it's really hard to find good, meaningful community outside of church. And they're more that they had in mind, that thing that they were missing, was actually a predefined path. It was something that they had been on, that they had experienced, that they wanted again, that they wanted back. And then in reflecting on this, she has this really, really great observation. She says, somewhere along the way, we bought into, or were sold, the idea that God was mainly interested in religion. Somewhere along the way that God was just interested in religion, religion being that set of practices that is important, but that isn't everything in and of itself, or religion that is a pathway. And if you just get the right pieces in place, you'll have this satisfaction of knowing meaning, knowing worth, of having made it, right? And despite their best intentions to, to want to center on that path, that is never really just this community or these relationships. See, on the one hand, we have a really uh, difficult problem with religion because we can make it about us personally, our individual journey of faith, and that is the most important thing. But on the other hand, there is the, or on the other side of the spectrum, if you will, is that, that sense of community, that is this community, these relationships. Both of them, I think, have a, a, can be dangerous if they, don't, if they don't realize that it's about something bigger, that this whole movement is God's redeeming of the world, that that needs to be in those relationships, and without it, it doesn't really matter. The rich man that we hear of in Mark today comes to Jesus, and he has all the right pieces in place. He's wealthy, so he's done pretty well in life. He's led an upright life. He's observed these commandments that Jesus has, has said, but he still wants more. Maybe he was realizing something was missing in his life, and that's why he goes to Jesus. But he comes to Jesus and says, good teacher, good teacher, what must I do? I'm not seeing it. I'm not finding it on my own. Help me out here. And, you know, we see that excitement build as Jesus is listing off the commandments, and he's like, yep, I've done it, I've done it, I've done it. But then there's that powerful moment in the story where it's like the air just gets sucked out of the scene, right? We can uh, put that up on the slide there. It's worth looking at again. Jesus, looking at the man, loves him and said, you lack one thing. Go, sell what you own, give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. That moment was just like a gut punch. You lack one thing. But I love uh, the part here, Jesus looking at him and loved him. We can go to the next slide. I think that's worth looking at again because when Jesus is telling him, you lack one thing, it's not this look of judgment. You know, it's not a, it's not a condemnation of, of the man. It's an invitation. And it's an invitation for the man to see his wealth, not just as stuff that he had accumulated, 
but as relationships that he had formed. A relationship with a certain lifestyle that he was really comfortable with. A relationship with his possessions that he probably really enjoyed. See, Jesus was giving him an opportunity, an opportunity for the man to notice what he was really asking for. He wanted the man to see that in asking for eternal life, he's not just asking for another thing. What he's really asking for is a new relationship. And if he wanted to know the life that Jesus was offering, then he would have to come face to face with what he valued in life. We don't know what sort of mental calculus was going on in his head at the time, but we know that he went away shocked and grieving. And then there's that line for he had great possessions. You can go to the next slide because I love this uh, picture here, this painting, if you will. It is called For He Had Great Possessions, George Frederick Watts. This is actually just part of a full body uh, painting. Um, it's pretty simple. And yet the, the detail of the rich man is in his clothing. Just you could tell in the painting, very vibrant, um, you know, rich fabric that he has. But you just see him turned away, right? Turned away in that sorrow, but also that turning away signifying how he's unable to face the life that Jesus is inviting him to. Or worse, that he actually faces it, that he sees the life that Jesus is inviting him to, but he turns away. And look how he's turning, he's into his clothes. Again, those clothes being that rich fabric, that, that uh, symbol of his wealth. He's turning into his wealth. He had a predetermined path. He knew what success looked like, and he wanted Jesus to offer him that path to success. But Jesus was telling him to leave it. He's telling him to leave the path that he is on. The connection that I see is the challenge that I believe the church faces today. You know, we look at the Christian church, historically pretty wealthy, both in influence, property, um, actual money, wealth, um, a, rich, a rich Christian tradition. But many of us know that we face a very different church than many of us have grown up in, right? It doesn't look the same. We've We've sensed for, for many years now, for at least a few decades, that things are changing. That it doesn't look the same, and we want, it, we want it back, to be honest. We want more of what we had. And for us, we're not asking Jesus, what do we do to inherit eternal life? But we're kind of asking, what do we do for relevance now? Right? Please, help us. We want that assurance of where we're going. We want to know that it's going to be okay. But the answer might not be what we expect. It might not be the path that we knew. It might not be more programming or the music that we once had. Jesus might be inviting us to something else, to a different journey than the one that we're expecting. And that's a bit of a scary place to be because it's asking we have to ask ourselves what is important to us you understand the disciples after this were a little afraid right they heard Jesus exchange with the rich man and are wondering whoa 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 we we left everything to follow you what what does this mean for us we've invested you know and I think like the disciples, we need that assurance from Jesus. For mortals, it is impossible. But for God, nothing is impossible. All things are possible. In closing, the other uh, piece I was connecting with here, um, there's a great, a great song by a folk singer named Joe Pug. Um, from 2008, and it's a song about this guy who's searching for, for connection. He's searching for, for meaning in life. And in the very final verse, he has, he has this, this great reflection. Um, you see it up here. And you've come to know me stubborn as a butcher. You've come to know me thankless as a guest. 
but will you recognize my face when God's awful grace strips me of my jacket and my vest, reveals all the treasure in my chest? I like that rich man. He was face to face with that treasure in his chest that he had to ask himself, what is this treasure in my life? And he was faced in God's awful grace. It's a really powerful image there. Awful, not in a revolting sense, of course, where, you know, but in a more awe-inspiring um, way, a sense of displacement there, that God's, God's grace does something different to us, something we don't expect. And collectively, I wonder if that's where we are, somewhere between these paths that we've traveled before and this sort of unknown future that God is still creating. Unsure of what we're willing to give up, maybe a little afraid of what we would be asked to leave behind. But like the rich man, we encounter God who is charting these paths of hope through disappointment, through unmet expectations. Paths of hope when it looks like that journey with Jesus isn't what we thought it would be. And so to this, we trust God and say, come what may, thanks be to God. Amen. Our next song, a uh, relatively new one for us, All the Poor and Powerless. All the poor and powerless And all the lost and lonely All the thieves will come confess And know that you are holy And know that you are holy And all will sing out hallelujah And we will cry out
sing out to our God, and all will sing out hallelujah. Oh, and all will sing out hallelujah. Oh, and all will sing. now have the time for prayers and Sandra will lead us in the prayers today and please remember that you can include uh, prayers in the chat function if you're streaming let us pray may children and heirs of God's promise we pray for the church the world and all in need uniting God you call forth different gifts in those who follow you. Encourage us to welcome the diverse benefits and blessings of the whole church in teaching, preaching, prophecy, healing, and more. Lord, in your mercy. Nurturing God, you bring forth crops from the soil and bounty from the trees. Increase the produce of the land and bless all who toil in fields and orchards. Provide for good working conditions and keep them safe. Lord, in your mercy. Empowering God, you offer compassion for those who are overlooked or forgotten. Open the hearts of local, national, and world leaders to show such compassion and love for their neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sheltering God, in Jesus you traveled among us without a place to lay your head. Provide safe places to sleep and rest for those who have no place to live. Sustain ministries that offer food, clothing, and peace of mind. Especially, we pray for Union Gospel Mission and Life Change Ministry. Lord, in your mercy. Renewing God, you bring life out of death. Help us part with those things that are no longer beneficial to us and open our hearts to see where new life is budding in this congregation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love, we lift up Vesper Seehofer, Leon, Lorraine Kruger, Chris Todd's mother, Edith, John Baumberger and family, Bill Hessler, Sam Ali, the Jane family, the family of Elotus Laban, Scott, and Peggy. Lord, in your mercy. Eternal God, we thank you for the lives of those who have died, especially Nancy Baumberger, Elotus Laban. Make us confident in your promise of salvation and support us in our own journey of faith. Lord, in your mercy. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now is the time where we would collect the offering. Again, you are still um, able to give online through our website or continue to send in um, checks and gifts for God's work and ministry here in this community. I'll lead us in the offering prayer today. 
God of abundance, you cause streams to break forth in the desert and manna to rain from the heavens. Accept the gifts you have first given us. Unite them with the offering of our lives to nourish the world you love so dearly. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We have come to the time where we will celebrate uh, the supper that Jesus uh, gave to us. And so hopefully you've prepared that at home if you are having communion at home with us. Um, hear the, the words of thanksgiving now. Blessed are you, O God, creator of heaven and earth. You rescued your covenant people, led them on all their journeys, and taught them by the prophets. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son, so that whoever believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Pour out your Holy Spirit in this meal and make us one in this community of faith and with your people throughout the world. Glory and praise to you, O God, author of life, word made flesh, power of the Most High, now and forever. Amen. We join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All who hunger and thirst, come. This is the table that Jesus invites us to. And this is where we receive Christ's body and blood for us. That promise of presence. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Come and receive. who have nothing still are giving when the thirsty pass the cup water to share when the wounded offer others strength and healing we see God here by our side walking our way Compassion gives the suffering consolation. When expecting brings to birth hope that was lost. When we choose love, not the hatred all around us. We see God here by our side.
With our longings free from envy, seek the humble. We see God here by our side, walking our way. We see God here by our side, walking our way. When the goodness poured from heaven fills our dwellings, when the nations work to change war into peace, when the stranger is accepted as our neighbor, we see God here by our side. Walking our way, we see God here by our side, walking our way. Let us pray. Lord of life, in the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now is the time where we have some announcements today. Um, Again, we have that trunk or treat planned for Saturday, October 30th. Still not sure what time or um, who to contact for that. Uh, I'll, I'll get to the bottom of that. I'll find out. But I do know we need volunteers to decorate their cars, right, for the parking lot to do the trunk or treat for kids and families. So, um, let us know if you're willing and able to do that, and we'll, uh, we'll get that information um, finalized and out to you. Um, also, we're working on uh, some stuff for children and families here in this worship space. When we come back, um, again, first of all, we'll announce hopefully um, next Sunday or soon when sort of that timetable looks like. Our, our committee is going to meet um, this coming week and, and uh, talk about that when we might be able to come back into the building. But we have kind of some ideas for a playground set up. We'll get into that. And then we'll have some activities for families and children, especially around the Advent time. So stay tuned for that. Um, also, I believe who are here. Yeah. Okay. Receive then the blessing. People of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. Our final song, Precious Lord, Take My Hand. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord. Precious Lord, linger near when my life is almost gone. Hear my cry, hear my call, hold my hand lest I fall. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. Darkness appears. 
tears and the night draws near and the day is past and gone at the river I stand guide my feet hold my hand take my hand precious Lord take me home at the river I stand Guide my feet, hold my hand, take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. Go in peace. The living word dwells in you. Thanks be, Thanks, be God. God. Thanks be to God. Precious Lord, take my hand.